what does a windmill have in common with smoke rising from an agarbatti? To find out, join us in another program in the series Zero Cost Experiments. Helping me today, I have this charming young lady, Rebika Shaw. Rebika, why don't you say hello to the viewers? Hello, my name is Rebika Shaw and I am going to do a few science experiments on air. Rebika, what is it about air that you find interesting? We breathe air. Yes. And it is invisible. Yes. And it is all around us. And it's all around us. Lovely. Now let us start with the first experiment. For this, we are going to need a bowl of water, an empty glass, a piece of wood which has been coloured red so that it is easily visible, and a piece of cloth. Now, Rebika, why don't you take this glass and put this cloth inside the glass? Now, hold it upside down and take the glass over the bowl of water and push it, push it under the water. Right? Is it completely submerged? Yes. Now, take it out gently and shake the water off okay now will you take the cloth out is this dry or wet it is dry it's dry now do you know why this cloth has remained dry because there was air inside the glass all the time oh lovely but how can we convince people that there is air inside this glass you know, it looks empty. Air, as you said, is invisible. Can you suggest what we can do? Shall I, if I were to put it in the water again, upside down as you did, and if I were to tilt it slightly, what do you think will happen? The air bubbles will come out. Air bubbles will come out. You can see the air is slowly bubbling out of the glass. And if I keep doing this, till all the air has bubbled out of the glass, then... The glass will be full of water. The glass is now full of water. Okay? So, this is one way of convincing people that this glass is not really empty. It is full of air. But how does the air prevent the cloth from getting wet? And to see this, what we do is, we take this piece of wood and float it in the water, right? And invert this glass over the wood again. Now what do you think is going to happen if I push this down? The wood will go down with the glass. The wood will go down with the glass as you can see happening now. And why is this happening? Because the air in the glass is pushing the wood down. Yes, the air in the glass is pushing the water down and the wood, piece of wood also goes down with the water. So you see the air in the glass prevents the water rising inside the glass even though the glass is completely underwater. And this is what prevents the cloth from getting wet. Is that clear now? Yes. Good. So, we have seen that the air is responsible for the cloth not getting wet and we can sum up by saying that air occupies space even though it is invisible and we cannot see it. You can repeat this experiment at home using a bucket instead of this bowl of water and uh, you can take the glass straight down or tilt it and see what happens in each case. Now, let us go over to the arrangement over there and perform another experiment connected with the fact that air occupies space. Come. Come. Now, for this experiment, we are going to need an empty bottle, a funnel, a glass full of coloured water. And why do you think the water is coloured? So that it is easily visible. Good. And we are going to need some atta and a piece of wood. Now, first of all, we place the funnel inside the neck of this bottle. Right? 
and we want to make this airtight by putting the arta all around the neck and the funnel okay and we, this is important if the arrangement is not airtight then the experiment will not work properly so you have to be careful at this stage of the experiment right now i will try and pour this water inside this bottle watch well let's try and get this arrangement airtight okay all right now why do you think the water is not going into the bottle because the bottle is full of air it's full of air and we haven't provided a way for the air to escape all right so the water is therefore still standing in the funnel now let us make it hole in the atta so that the air can get out through the hole and you can see now the water starts flowing rapidly if i close this hole the flow stops almost and then if i release it and make the hole again you can see the water starts flowing through again so what does this experiment show us the, the same that thing air, that air occupies space air occupies space and if you want to pour liquid into a, any bottle then it is necessary that you provide a way for the air inside the bottle to escape out the, of the bottle right right and you must have seen this kind of thing happening even when you try and pour kerosene inside uh, a lamp or inside a bottle that yes. you have to hold the the funnel slightly above the neck of the bottle in order that the kerosene flow uh, nicely and smoothly inside the bottle now let us look at another property of air for this we are going to need a bottle and the bottle is such that there is a drinking straw which has been uh, put inside a cork and the cork has been fitted into the neck of the bottle right and the bottle contains some water and the important thing is that the lower end of the straw must be below the level of the water okay now i am going to ask you to put your mouth to the end of the straw and blow hard and as long as you can right and then take your mouth away all right so you put your mouth to the neck of the straw blow as long as and as hard as you can keep on blowing and then suddenly remove your mouth <laughs> yeah that was a surprise wasn't it huh yes, yes. well uh, i hope it wasn't unpleasant now let us see what happened can can you do it more gently this time and uh, you see as you blow the air bubbles through and keeps accumulating inside the bottle right and more and more air gets packed inside so when you remove your mouth the air wants to get out and as it wants tries to get out it pushes the the water inside the bottle down and up through the tube and the water comes out in the form of a little fountain and that's what hit you in the face let me see if i can explain this to you a little better do you know what this is a glass syringe do you feel anything i feel air so there is air inside this glass syringe now normally if i leave the syringe open i, I push it in somewhat and leave it it stays in its position or yes. if i take the piston and move it out it stays in its position yes. but if i close one end with a finger all right so that the air inside is trapped yes. and i now push the piston in what happens it springs back out it springs back out almost as if the air here were a piece of rubber that when i pushed it in it got compressed and then when i released the it springs back 
to its original position. Yes. Now I can do the same thing. This is like pressing a piece of rubber. I can also pull it out and again when I release it, what happens? It springs back to its normal. Its original position. So again, the air seems to be tra trapped inside this uh, glass syringe. Yes. And again, it, now it seems as if it's acting like a piece of rubber which is being stretched. And when I release it, it pulls it back to its original shape and size. So you see, uh, we can make air behave like a piece of elastic. It can be compressed or it can be extended much like a piece of rubber. Now, to make the connection even clearer, let me show you uh, this piece of sponge, which also is slightly elastic. When I press it in together and release it, it springs back to its original shape, like yes. the syringe was doing. Or I can stretch it out of shape and release it, and again it regains its original shape. So you see, we can make air behave like a piece of rubber. We can stretch it or compress it. And as soon as the force which is stretching or compressing it is released, the air regains back its original shape. We will now look at another property of air. And for this, we will have to do experiments which are arranged over in the other corner of the room. So let's go. In this experiment, we have arranged a balance. And from the two arms of the balance, we have suspended two paper bags which are upside down. Right? Now, uh, we are going to need a candle. So you, will you please hold the candle while I light it? And now, what I'm going to do is hold this candle underneath one of the paper bags and see what happens. What is happening? The paper bag is going up in the air. Good. Now, suppose I move the candle over to the other bag. The other bag also goes up into the air. Now, if... Alright, let me show it once again. Which is the lighter bag? That one. And which is the bag which contains hot air? That one. So, what this experiment shows is that hot air is lighter than cold air. Yes. This bag contains hot air, that bag contains cold air, this bag is lighter, that bag is heavier. So, hot air is lighter than cold air. Now, let me show a consequence of this fact by means of another simple experiment. Will you please hold this candle so that it doesn't fall? What, for this other experiment, what we do is, we take a circle of paper and we cut a spiral. You understand what a spiral is? Yes. And then we take a stick at the end of which we have put a pin. Right? Now I'm going to balance this paper on the end of the stick. And I'm going to bring it over the candle. And do you see what happens? Yes. What is happening? The uh, the spiral is turning and round. Round and round. And why is this happening? Because the heat of the air. Well, the candle is the heating the air. And the hot air. What is happening to the hot air? The hot air is and the hot air is going up. Because it is light. Yes. And because it is going and because it is going up, it turns this. Right. So, what these two experiments show then is that hot air is lighter than cold air. Hot air is lighter than cold air. The more correct expression is that hot air is less dense than cold air, and therefore, when I heat air, it goes up. Right? Yes. Now, this is the principle on which hot air balloons work. And uh, this is 
precisely the reason why hot air balloons rise in the sky because they are full of hot air which is lighter than or less dense than the surrounding air and the hot air balloon yeah. rises up in the sky. If you uh, want to know more about how a hot air balloon works and if you want to know how to make a hot air balloon yourself using tissue paper, then please write in to this address for more information. Vijay Varma, care of Joint Director CIET, NCERT, Sri Aurobindo Marg, New Delhi, one one zero zero one six. I hope you've enjoyed the show and now it's goodbye till the next time. Goodbye.